Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Spring Framework. Hold on, we have talked about Spring Framework, but then when we started coding, uh, in between we talked about Spring Boot and the project which we have created is done with the help of Spring Boot. And things are a bit easy, right? But what if you don't want to use Spring Boot? What if you want to work on a Spring Framework? So there are two reasons why this video is important. First, what if the project you are working on in your company or maybe by yourself, you don't want to use Spring Boot or you don't have a choice of using a Spring Boot. So this video becomes important to understand how do you work with Spring Framework. Second reason for this video is in this video, you will understand what is happening behind the scene, right? How Spring analyze the configuration and what are different aspects of this uh, configuration. So we'll talk about it. Of course, we have discussed those things in the Spring Boot as well, but when you do it here, it will make much more sense. So the project which we have here, again, a simple project, what we have done till now is we got uh, three different classes. We got developer, we got desktop and laptop, and then a developer needs a computer. It can be a desktop or laptop, and that's what we are doing here. But if you see nowhere, we have done any configuration. Basically, this the, you, the Spring Boot analyze these annotations and then based on that, it will create a project for you and it will make it work for you. But then, as I mentioned, there is no XML file, there is no separate Java class where you are doing all this configuration. So what if you don't want to use Spring Boot? I want to use a normal Spring Framework now. So what I will do is, I will just go back here and create a new project. So let's go to here, uh, the IntelliJ ID, of course, any ID will work. You will click on new, click on project. And I don't want to create a spring project now because when you create a spring project, it will be spring boot project. So what I will do is I will click on Maven archetype. So when you talk about a project like spring, when you talk about different frameworks, you have to use certain build tool to create those projects. Of course, in uh, spring boot also, we have used Maven. Here also, we are going to use Maven. Of course, we can also use Gradle there, uh, but let's stick to Maven. So here I'm going to create a project, I will say, demo spring, that's my project name. And I will keep that in downloads, doesn't matter where it is. Next, the JDK version. So make sure that you first of all click on this Maven archetype, or if you're using Eclipse, it will give you option of creating a Maven project. So select that. The JDK version, in this machine I have uh, 21. I will just go with that. And then it is asking you for the catalog. See, Maven as a build tool also has its way of creating a project. It will give you a basic structure of a project. Now, based on different framework, based on different services which you want to use, they provide you certain archetypes. Archetypes basically your project structure. So they provide you different archetypes which you can use. Uh, of course, you can build this archetype or you can build this project from scratch without using that particular uh, template, but they give you certain templates to use. And there are certain templates which they have inbuilt and there are some templates which have been uh, sourced. So example, if I click on catalog here, you can see there's an option of internal, then also Maven Central. So there are certain templates or archetypes you can use it from Maven Central. So if I choose internal here, and if I expand this archetype, there are limited options. You can see, uh, you can actually at least count it. Uh, there is there's a template for uh, a J, J2E application, for portlets, for quick start. We are going to use quick start and we have web app as well. But if you click on Maven Central, you will see a lot of options. You can see it is loading here, loading done. And if I expand now, there are so many options here. You can just, sometimes it is confusing which one to choose. And that's why we are not going to use this. Maybe there is already application available for Spring Boot. As you can see, it is here. Spring Boot 3 REST API archetype. So you can use this archetype. It will give you a template to work with. I will stick to internal and let's create a quick start project. So I can just click on quick start here and the version just stick to it. There are certain additional properties. We can skip that. Advanced settings. This is where you can mention your group ID, which is already called the Telisco. The artifact name is Demo Spring. And I can click on create here. And I will go, I'm going to create a new window because maybe I want to use the old project code. So this is my project. This is my spring project. Now, you know what? Basically, this is a spring project but only with a name. Nowhere in the project we are using Spring feature. See, when you say Spring feature, basically we have to add a dependency for Spring and we don't have it here. If you can see, we don't have a Spring dependency. We have to add that. So that's one. 
Next, if you see the uh, external dependency, of course, we don't have anything here. We don't even have the configuration for Spring. We have not done for Spring Boot as well, but here we have to create a configuration file to make it work. So now what, you, what we will do is, let's create a simple code. In fact, we can actually use those codes which we already have. So maybe I will just try to reuse. So let's go to the Spring Boot app, and I want to use these two classes, dev, and, uh, okay, let's only use dev. I will just copy this and paste it here. So we got dev class and we don't need all these annotations now. We don't need uh, auto wire, other stuff, or maybe we don't even need a computer. Maybe I could have just typed it by myself. Sometimes being lazy is a additional work you get. Okay, so I just wanted these two things and I don't even want all these packages. A simple class, nothing fancy. You can see we got a dev class, which has a build method, and it says working on the awesome project. Maybe you can just type it instead of copying it from the older project. And now I want to create object of dev inside this app. So this is your main code, the main Java code. First, I want to check if this project is running. I mean, this is the step, important step you should do. Whenever you create a new project without typing any code, just run it to check if it is working. That's important. So here I don't want to print hello world. Uh, we just want to, okay, I just want, I don't even want the comments here. So what I want here is to create object for dev so that I can call build. So the idea is to call build, but for that I have to create object of dev. So I will say dev obj equal to new dev. And then I'm going to say obj dot build. So this should work because we are creating the object by ourselves. Nowhere we are using spring yet. So it says uh, working on the awesome project. So we are happy. But then we don't want to say new Java, new dev here, right? This is what I want to get from Spring. I want Spring to create this object. Now, can I use, uh, we have seen in the Spring Boot, we can, can we use Spring, I mean, can we use component here? First of all, we don't have this component option is because we don't have Spring Boot or Spring Framework here. And even if you use Spring Framework component, it will not be able to configure that. So this will not work. So how do we make it work? The first thing is, if you want the dev here, we have to work with the container. Remember when we have talked about a project where you can have multiple uh, classes, and then you also have something called a JVM here, in which you will be having a section where you will be having heap memory and stuff, and then inside that, you will be having your IOC container, and then uh, inside this, you will be having objects. But unfortunately, we don't have the object yet. So how do we got, get this object? So even before you get the object, the first thing you need to get is the container. How will you get the container? And we have seen that right before. If you want to work with the container, we have to create object of application context. You need object of application context and we don't have the object. First of all, we don't even have this interface in the project. If when I say control space, you're not getting the package of it. Reason, this is not part of a Java. This is a part of Spring Framework. So if you want this to work, we need to get the external libraries for Spring. And how do we do that? So we have to add this Spring dependency. So we already have a JUnit dependency. Apart from this, we need to get the dependency for Spring. But not everyone remembers the dependency name and the artifact ID and the version number. We don't know that, right? Or maybe some superhumans knows uh, this by heart. I don't know. So how do we get it? So it's very simple. What you can do is you can go to one of the most famous plays for the dependency, which is called a Maven repository. You can just go here and search for, in fact, it already had a Spring context. Is it so famous or maybe they are tracking me what I'm doing? They got so many uh, libraries, you know, uh, why it is only promoting Spring? Maybe even they are tracking me. So here, basically you have to search for Spring context. And you can see this is what I want. So when I click on this, I can select any version. So normally I prefer the version which doesn't have any vulnerabilities and uh, you can see they give you warning as well. 5.3 has the vulnerability. Uh, we can skip that. Six is a version we, which we are going for. Uh, which one to choose? First of all, make sure that you don't have any uh, security issue here. Second, go with the version which is not latest, but if it is latest and it is used by so many projects, that's fine. You can go with this, 6.1.6. .6. So you can see this version, basically you can just copy this. And if you're not using Maven, you can even get it from the Griddle. So you can just use that. So I'm using Maven, I will just copy this 
and replace this dependency which we have written with the new thing. I don't want to market the Spring uh, Maven repository. So yeah, so this is how basically you create, uh, you get the dependency. Oh, but it's not coming here. Why it is not coming here? It's because we have to reload the changes. So in IntelliJ, you have to load this Maven changes, but in Eclipse, it will happen, most of the time it happens by default. So I'm gonna click on load Maven changes, and now you can see we got the dependencies for Spring Context. And once you have that, let's go to our app, and let's say control space. Okay, there was some, some issue with the importing. It should normally work, but I don't know what's wrong. Or maybe I'm writing a wrong spelling or maybe IntelliJ has some issues. Anyway, so I, I got the context. I will say this is a this is a context equal to. Now, how do we create this object? So let me just comment this too for time being. So how do we create this object? So of course you can say new application context, but application context itself is a interface. So you can't get object of application context. In that case, we can go for the classes which implements application context. And one of the class is class path XML application context. We are going to use this because initially we'll start with the XML configuration. We can do it with annotations as well or Java based configuration. Let's go with uh, XML and that's it. You got this object. And now once you do this, this line basically creates the container. So our job is done. The container is ready, but with that container, how do I get the object? It's very simple. You can simply say context dot get bean. And here you can mention what bean you want. Maybe I want the bean of dev dot class. Our job is done and it should work. Let's see if that works. Let's run this because we got the container. I'm expecting the object is there. I just have to use that. Let's run this and no, it's not working. So it says bin factory not initialized or already closed. So it says before accessing bin why application context. First of all, what is bin factory? So the way you have application context, the container is created with the help of bin factory. It manages the bin of uh, the container. So in the earlier versions of uh, Spring, we used to use bin factory, but now we use application context. So it says something is wrong. I mean, it's closed. I'm not able to create the container. I mean, it's creating a container, but it is closed now. So how do you configure your container? Because in the container, we don't have this object of dev. And that's where you have to create a XML configuration. But how do we do that? So it's simple actually. In this bracket, you can mention the XML configuration name. So I will say spring.xml. But we have to create this XML file. Okay. And if you run this with just, by, just by that statement, of course, this name can be anything. It says the XML is not found. And where it is searching for it, it is searching for that file in the class path resource. Okay, uh, since it is a class path, we have to go with class path. So what I will do is in the main folder, I will create a directory called resources. Normally it is there, but maybe it is not showing that in the IntelliJ idea. Just check if you have resources folder. In this resource folder, you will create a file called spring.xml. And this is where you have to do the configuration. And if you just create a file and if you do nothing here, and relaunch it. This time it should not say file not found. It should give you some different error. It says line number one, column number one, premature end of file because we have not done anything. But what is this configuration? Uh, let's see that in the next video.